Look, to say I've been following the FTC versus Microsoft case over the last few days would be an understatement. I've been watching lots of recaps on it. Well, at least you weren't like JTEC TV and restreamed it, which is a felony, making JTEC, to my knowledge, the first console fanboy to actually commit a felony in the name of PlayStation. Seriously, watch this video by Klutzy King about it. The whole situation is amazing. The console war is evolving by the minute. Which brings us to today's video by Nintendo Prime, one of the biggest Nintendo shills I've ever seen. But unlike someone like Harmon Smith, I'm actually positive this guy isn't trolling. And with how mindless and back and forth the Microsoft Activision hearings have been, you would think that most people just want to be done and over with it. But apparently the FTC said something that made Nintendo Prime very, very upset. So let's see how stupid this gets. Looking at the documentation, seeing all the official quotes, and yeah, it, it, it's sort of entertainment for me at this point because in my opinion, the FTC kind of looks like a joke and like they don't understand the market. Who knew? There's plenty of that going around now, huh? People with large voices saying things that make absolutely no sense but are presented with such smugness that it stinks in the nearest five counties. That shit's the worst. Good thing we're completely safe from that here. But I wasn't going to really talk about this much outside of maybe live streams until Nintendo was brought into the conversation because... Fucking here come the Nintendo police, you fucking scared yet? Of course, the FTC is attempting to do something the CMA attempted to do. Say they're blocking the Activision acquisition because something's something anti-competitive, but in a few months they're going to drop it because this was literally never about anti-competition, just who has more money and time to waste on hearings that are inevitably going to go in Microsoft's favor because Sony is fucking terrible at this. And basically say, Nintendo doesn't matter. I bet that's effectively... What they're saying now. <laughs> um, no, they're not. <laughs> These hearings are due to grievances between Sony and Microsoft, the two competing HD consoles. Nintendo absolutely still matters in the gaming industry. Nobody said they didn't. They just haven't been very vocal about the Microsoft Activision thing because why would they be? Activision has a much smaller presence on the Switch than the other two platforms for obvious hardware and market reasons, and for those reasons, the Switch is kind of off in its own corner of gaming. You know, Nintendo's been doing that forever. Ever since the Wii and Wii U, Nintendo have made it very clear that they're not interested in following where the AAA market is going, and the AAA market has said, okay, we'll happily port games to whatever awkward, underpowered Nintendo console is out this week, but we're not gonna include it in the benchmark of how we make our games. So the rollover between Nintendo and the AAA industry became much smaller, and the industry has generally been fine with this. You don't buy a Nintendo console to keep up with the latest AAA games. The gaming industry has largely seen Nintendo as its own entity, and the simplest explanation for it, as many people have pointed out, is that there aren't that many people with both an Xbox Series and a PS5, but there are a lot of people with a Switch and an Xbox Series, or a Switch and a PS5. PS5, or a Switch and a PC. The Nintendo market is very distinct from the standard console market, and that's because Nintendo chose to make it that way. But going back to this video at hand, the FTC never said Nintendo didn't matter, or even really imply that. You seem upset that Nintendo hasn't been involved with these hearings, but frankly, why would they be? This isn't a surprise because the FTC, in December of last year, when making um, some statements about how they were opposed to this acquisition, noted that they wanted to make a new product category for home consoles. Yeah, that's honestly a good idea. I, I don't see why that'd be anything but beneficial in the future, frankly. Again, this was in December of 2022 that they wanted to make this product category. And the product category is called the high performance console market, of which they claim only two exist. PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S and X. I mean, yeah. Like, no shot you're about to get offended that the FTC pointed out the obvious here. Now, this is clearly an attempt to just minimize the impact of Nintendo. What they essentially are saying is that Nintendo systems do not play the same games. Bro, quit reading so far into this. It's painfully clear what they meant by noting a distinction between the Switch and everything else. And because they don't play the same games, they don't 
count. The Switch came out in 2017. It's more in line with 8th generation platforms. There's only two 9th generation platforms, and the Switch doesn't matter in today's market. How are you getting all of that from the simple fact that the FTC knows what a 9th gen console is? Do you somehow think there shouldn't be a distinction between the console that runs on 2017 phone tech and routinely doesn't get a port of the latest AAA multi-platform game? The console that literally nobody thinks of as the go-to place for modern non-casual gaming because Nintendo removed themselves from that conversation decades ago? The Switch simply is not a quote high performance console and to act like it is, is fanboyism of the highest order. And I know there's some irony in Joe from Seattle of all fucking people coming to the defense of a high performance label for the Xbox and the PS5, but like, it's all relative, you know? A three-legged dog is still gonna run faster than a two-legged dog. Fuck, that was terrible, I'm cutting that. Now, that is a basically what they were trying to argue back then, which sounded utterly ridiculous, because the- Because you made it up, and you somehow think the Switch and PS5 are comparable in every way simply because they exist within the same economy. To put this in Fortnite terms, this is like if there was a guy who only played no build and he never liked playing normal pubs, but then a big update to turbo build came out and it was somehow supposed to be a surprise that the guy who played no build didn't care about it. The whole point of creating that product category was to present the fact that this Activision Blizzard acquisition wouldn't have any impact on Nintendo. Because for all intents and purposes, it wouldn't. I don't see how any existing Switch port plans from any studio involved is going to be affected by this in the slightest. Like, why would they be? That, so that that was that was the general gist of it. Why are they creating this product category? Because they're trying to disclude Nintendo from mattering in the acquisition, so they could focus on this being. PlayStation versus Xbox. Again, why would Nintendo matter in this acquisition? Microsoft said, hey, I want to buy a thing. And Sony did the legal equivalent of telling the teacher with a shitty tone of voice to make it sound like there was some kind of wrongdoing being done. It's also been revealed that Sony was attempting to snatch up a bunch of multi-platform games from Xbox, like Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop, and that's part of the reason why they started buying studios. But funnily enough, pretty much every multi-platform game in the conversation right now wasn't going to be on the Switch in the first place. So I say it again, why would Nintendo matter in this acquisition? Also, it would make arguments that Xbox presents about being in third place not true because, well, Nintendo doesn't count. Microsoft called themselves third place. The FTC never said that. Also, entirely different context, but it's not like that matters to you. Nintendo got some dirt in its eye and you're pissed on their behalf because apparently that's what real adults do on the internet. It's quite interesting that they wanted to make this argument because there's so many reasons that Nintendo obviously counts. Even if you want to talk game subscriptions, Nintendo has 36 to 40 million NSO subscribers. Suggesting that NSO is the same as Game Pass is fucking laughable. Like, are you even aware of what differences exist between the Switch and every other platform? Or do you play on the Switch and only the Switch and just imagine in your brain what other platforms are like? Nintendo Switch Online is just the online paywall for the Switch in the same way that Xbox Live Gold is the paywall for the Xbox. But there's also the NSO Expansion Pass because the comparison that he's making here is like, oh, subscriptions are a major part of the conversation and the acquisition debate. But that's because of Game Pass, not subscriptions in general. It's about Game Pass, which is nothing like what NSO offers, expansion pass or not. That just screams how little you actually understand this situation. Game Pass and NSO are nothing alike, and to say Nintendo should be involved with the hearings simply because they half-assed some features to go along with their online paywall is just Fucking bananas. So now Nintendo is a big player in that. It generates over a billion dollars in revenue for them every single year. Oh my god, yeah, no shit a subscription service that you need to access all the online features on a console with over 125 million units sold. Yeah, I would think that service is generating a billion dollars in a year. But you know what else is generating a billion dollars in revenue? Game Pass. Quarterly. And it's optional. Even by your own standards for why Nintendo should be included here, you're just proving that the comparison makes no sense. Nintendo's also had incredible system and software sales and been leading pretty much since it came out 
in those categories. So yes, because it's a casual handheld hybrid console, it's an entirely different product than a home console that sells itself on flashy graphics, multiplayer, and home entertainment capabilities. It's really, really obvious why there's such a sales disparity between the Switch and everything else. And it's the same reason the, the Wii outsold the PS3 and the 360 so dramatically. And it's a major reason why the Wii U entirely flopped. When you create a base for yourself and you give that base what they want, you will be successful. So if you build your brand on an upbeat game tone, easy to learn gameplay, lovable characters, and hardware gimmicks meant for socializing like the Wii remotes and the, and the detachable Joy-Cons, yeah, no shit, people don't see you as the place to go for the new Call of Duty or the new cinematic third-person action game. The Wii understood this, the Switch understood this, the Wii U was completely murdered over this because Nintendo seemingly was trying to market to both the casuals and the HD hardcores at the same time, which is why the Wii U launch lineup had Just Dance 4 and New Super Mario Bros. right next to Zombie U and Ninja Gaiden 3. Casuals had no idea what the fucking thing was and the HD hardcore gamers didn't want a Nintendo-fied version of what they already had. Nintendo has their prime market and it's simply not connected to the Xbox or PlayStation's prime market. To just be like, oh, Nintendo doesn't matter, is really weird. And then on top of that, Nintendo also still gets some of the same games that PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series get. Yeah, some of the games. You just said it yourself. It's some of the games. They're not a regular receiver of major multi-platform releases. You just admitted it. Examples. <laughs> just to throw this out there, Mortal Kombat 1. Hello? Like, that's not even a game that's come out yet, and we already know it's coming to Nintendo Switch. Yeah, bro, everything is the same, because a game known for local multiplayer is getting a Switch port. Mortal Kombat is absolutely representative of the entirety of AAA gaming. Yes, you're correct. You're right. You're, you're right. Good brain. Good brain thinking there. But remember, Switch needs to be in a different category it can't be counted as a main competitor in the console space so you think the switch experience of mk1 will be representative of the ps5 experience or the xbox series experience that's your hill that's the hill you're dying on now again this was back in december of 22 but this came up yesterday when they put phil spencer on the stand and they came at phil in a very, very interesting way when it comes to this. They basically made a statement that Nintendo does not count as a competitor and is irrelevant to this case. Which is literally true, but if we're going off the FTC's high-performance distinction, who gives a shit, I guess? And, well, Phil Spencer wasn't having it. He said it is incorrect for the FTC to say Nintendo isn't a competitor when it still occupies the same industry and even hosts the same and similar third-party content. Whoa, dude, that's crazy. Phil Spencer is trying to say that Nintendo should count because it makes Xbox look worse by comparison and gain sympathy in a situation where they're actively trying to garner sympathy? That's insane, bro. That means take everything at face value no matter what without thinking about it. He went on to have a very interesting quote where he said, the reason you're trying to disclude them it doesn't matter because Nintendo does this market in a different way. So he agrees the markets on each platform are different. They created a handheld portable device that you could take games and play anywhere with you. The form factor alone means, of course, it cannot compete on a technical level level so phil spencer agrees they're not the same technical level maybe one could say he agrees the switch is not a high performance console hmm but generations have never been defined by technical levels that's a massive overgeneralization if i've ever heard one okay well it's true the the most technically inferior console may end up being the best seller of the generation that doesn't mean it always is and to use this as evidence that the hardware difference should be ignored is ridiculous, especially when you consider that the majority of the AAA games coming out today do not release on the Switch because of its hardware and difference in the market. Just a random example of what I mean. Do you think it's a coincidence that Activision consciously held Call of Duty off of the Switch until after games like Fortnite and Apex proved that there was a market for casual multiplayer shooters on Nintendo systems? You really think a publisher like Activision that pushes out new Call of Duty games every year, regardless of the state of them, you really think they were just going to willingly sit out on a Switch COD game for six years? Or 
Do you think they didn't want to put in the additional resources to make a Switch version of the game that will likely sell far less than the other versions of the game because they are fundamentally different? Activision is a fucking trapdoor spider. They literally snatch up every single monetary bandwagon they can with Call of Duty. There is no shot it took them six years to come up with the idea for a Switch Call of Duty game. If other crossplay multiplayer shooters like Fortnite and Apex hadn't proven successful on the Switch, Call of Duty simply would not be dipping their toe in the market. Because like everything else Activision does, they waited for a couple other companies to take the initial risk so that way they wouldn't actually have to lose any money or, dare I say, come up with their own ideas. I completely forgot why I went on that tangent. And I find that to be an interesting remark because actually if you go throughout console history, the weakest system is typically sold the best. It's like the Wii U and GameCube never happened to you people. I swear to God. Nintendo fanboys are so weird because they'll be like, oh my God, Nintendo is so dominant. They're always so dominant. And then it's like, hey, what about the Wii U and the GameCube? And they're like, be gone with those things. The Wii U was the weakest system and had to be shut down early. That's like, the, you realize that's the reason the Switch exists in the first place, right? And back in the sixth console generation, the GameCube was dramatically outsold by the PS2 and Xbox, despite having arguably the best hardware of all three systems. My point is that even when multi-platform games were expected to release and run well on Nintendo hardware, they were never guaranteed the top place. And you can very easily argue that the only reason that Nintendo ever got to the top place again, in terms of console sales, is because they heavily leaned into the part of their audience that separated them from the other platforms. They were much more casual friendly and not so instantly associated with the mature, HD, more hardcore games that were topping the PlayStation and Xbox charts. That's why the Wii was so successful. And again, part of the reason why the Wii U flopped, and certainly the reason why the Switch has been so successful in the modern gaming scene. They're successful because for the most part, they don't compete. They just do their own thing and work with those who want to work with them, but they're not going to lose sleep over burning any bridges due to hardware. So obviously, fundamentally, they are not going to be concerned with the same things Microsoft and Sony are, nor are they seeking the same core audience. So that's actually true historically. It, it's only like one generation where the stronger platform actually led. When was that? Eighth gen, I guess? PS4? Because the PS4 outselling the Wii U and Xbox was solely due to hardware in your eyes, apparently. That's weird and really dumb. Otherwise, historically, the weakest platform in every generation is the one that leads. And while we're talking about, you know, you can, we can have the debate, and we've had it before, whether Switch belongs in Gen 8, whether it belongs in Gen 9. It was released in the Gen 8 window, but that's not justification to view it the same way as other platforms on a technical or market level, especially when you remember the reasons for the Wii U's failure. Whether it sort of, you know, blurs the lines because technically Nintendo already had a Gen 8 system in the Wii U. Reality is that when it just comes from the business perspective of the entirety of the console space, you clearly cannot ignore Nintendo. In the console space, no. This all stemmed from the FTC simply wanting to distinguish the obvious difference between Nintendo's console space and the overall console space. It amazes me you've taken so much issue with this on Nintendo's behalf. Like, bro, they're not going to send you a thank you card. Or pretend that Nintendo has no impact on that space or pretend that this acquisition wouldn't impact Nintendo at all. We're now five minutes and 23 seconds into Nintendo Prime's video, and he has not given a single example of how Nintendo would be affected by the acquisition. Like, not one example. There's already a 10-year deal in place if the acquisition goes through, and you guys remember the CMA saying, oh, ho, 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 Switch can't even run Call of Duty. That, that thing means nothing. A direct quote, I'm sure. But yeah, the Switch can't run the current version of Call of Duty. Making a Switch version of a game that technically demanding and poorly optimized would take a lot of resources, if it's even possible, and Activision wasn't convinced the market was there for it on the Switch. I mean, the market was kind of there for Call of Duty on Nintendo platforms during, like, the COD Golden Age. Like, there was certainly an, a, a Wii COD community, just not nearly the size of the PS3 or 360's community, or even the PC's community. You know, back on games like Black Ops 1 and Modern Warfare 3. The benefits of jumping through all the hardware hoops just didn't outweigh the effort going into them, which is why they stopped after I think Ghost was the last Call of Duty game to come out on a Nintendo console. Things only changed after it was proven that there actually is a decently sized market for casual multiplayer shooters on the Switch, so a Switch-specific Call of Duty game going into production 
that's not that's not weird or surprising or anything like that. I uh, wasn't considering that Nintendo is probably going to be releasing a new platform soon. So, oh man, it's it, it's just kind of frustrating watching governing bodies like the FTC and the CMA in the past who really do not understand this industry try to argue the relevance of Nintendo. Nintendo is is probably the least relevant. Oh my god, bro, is this like an ET situation where you and Nintendo are linked somehow and you're getting offended on on the behalf of a slight from the FTC that didn't even fucking happen? Like is this really where we're at of the three systems when it comes to this acquisition in one regard? Nintendo doesn't actually care. So why do you? Nintendo isn't opposed to the acquisition because they think the acquisition will probably help them because now they'll have Call of Duty on Switch and they'll get to take their 30% cut of those sales. So, so genuinely, why are you upset? Nintendo looks at this as a win. Now, the thing is, there's other games, there's other games from Activision Blizzard that appear on Switch. Hello, Crash Bandicoot. Hello, Overwatch. Yeah, why would that stop being the case when Microsoft takes over? Like, Activision Blizzard has been supporting Switch in some ways, just not always. So, like, this acquisition could impact that. Funny how you literally just said not always, but didn't elaborate. Like, you are aware that the systems are different, but you completely refuse to talk about it because you are so dead set on the FTC being big stinky dick faces for daring to imply that maybe Nintendo isn't the place people go to for the same reasons they go to the PlayStation or Xbox. And that's literally been the case for decades, and it only is that way because Nintendo chose to make it that way. Maybe there's no more future Crash games on there. Hey, look, Diablo 3 was on Switch but Diablo 4 isn't. It's almost like modern games are struggling to get consistent performance on a 2017 phone. There are aspects to this that while Nintendo might gain Call of Duty, they could lose other games. This acquisition doesn't just impact PlayStation and Xbox. I like how you equate the lack of Diablo 4 on the Switch to the addition of Call of Duty on the Switch all while ignoring the fact that COD is getting a completely unique game for the Switch, not a direct port which breaks that entire section of the video. I, I think that's I think that's the, the, the problem here is when the FTC is trying to not count Nintendo because Nintendo is doing it different and yet still getting some of the same games, some of the third-party games. There's Activision Blizzard games on Nintendo. It's utterly ridiculous to just dismiss the platform. Hey, where's the Hogwarts Legacy Switch port? Like, just curious, since it's apparently the exact same as all the other platforms and therefore couldn't possibly be having technical difficulties trying to run a modern open-world RPG with a realistic graphic style. That couldn't possibly be the case. Saying it's not going to be impacted by this so it doesn't matter when clearly it would be impacted by this because it has Activision Blizzard games on its platform and actually would be gaining Call of Duty. It, it, it's just frustrating watching governing bodies dance around Nintendo's relevancy. I'm going to lose my fucking mind. And I don't know why they do that other than just straight up not understanding this industry. All this because the FTC implied the Switch wasn't a high performance console compared to the PS5 and Xbox series consoles. Incredible. The FTC has did such a poor job yesterday. The judge cut them off three times. Three separate times the judge told the FTC that's enough. Let's move on. Are you really suggesting that people getting interrupted or cut off during legal trials is uncommon? Also, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it's not like this kind of thing is normally super public, like in real time. So for all we know, three interruptions over a period of time that I'd honestly forgotten if you specified or not, for all we know, that could be totally normal. Because the FTC couldn't get off of certain points that they were trying to get Phil Spencer caught in a gotcha moment. And it, it, it just... It didn't work. Are you serious right now? Like, you seriously think the FTC suggested the Switch wasn't a high-performance console simply so they could try and 5D chess Phil Spencer into admitting something damning? Bro, this isn't fucking Ace Attorney. It's not that deep. Uh, they tried to get him to slip up on Call of Duty by saying anything possibly incriminating that Call of Duty wouldn't be on PlayStation. Yeah, bro, FTC hearings are actually just that one episode of It's Always Sunny about the serial 
where everyone's just throwing wild accusations that are tangentially related to the point of the hearing, but no one actually knows what's going on, and eventually everyone's just going to walk away and the whole thing's going to be blamed on someone who wasn't involved in the first place. That's that's totally how the FTC hearings work. That's totally how this works. And despite PlayStation not signing the 10-year deal, Phil Spencer still said it would be on PlayStation and future PlayStations and that it would be parody even without the, a deal in place. Because Call of Duty's PlayStation player base is so gigantic year after year that not releasing the game on the PS5 would be detrimental to business. You know, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm done with this. The link is in the description to this video if you want to see the last few minutes. There's like another three minutes after this, but at this point, I think your point's been made perfectly clear. This is a fucking atrocious video, and you're giving the FTC way too much character in all this. To even suggest that the Switch is playing games the same way or attracting the same core audience as the PS5 or Xbox Series consoles is fucking ridiculous. But to get legitimately offended on Nintendo's behalf over your own misrepresentation of this is absurd. Like, this is the kind of thing that I would expect from Harmon Smith, not an actual YouTube channel. People really just want to simp for boxes these days. Toodles.